Ben, what do you call a JavaScript Jedi? I don't know. A left Padawan. <laughs> So uh, we're across the canal from uh, the pusher offices in a cafe. Uh, I'm here, I'm Ben, um, and this is Jack. Hey. Hey, so uh, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good, how are cool. you? Yeah, super good, <laughs> super good. Fantastic. So I think this week we've been thinking about the, uh, the left pad debacle, or left pad gate, as I like to call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for the unaware, this is the, the module left pad on NPM, 11 lines of JavaScript uh, that was depended on by Babel and React and loads of other stuff. Uh, whose author unpublished it from NPM uh, and then basically half the internet broke as far as we can tell um, and for a good few hours nothing worked. Uh, no NPM installs that depend on Babel which is nearly every JavaScript project out there. Um, and none of them worked, they all broke uh, to the point where NPM eventually un unpublished the module putting it back online and fixing development as we know it. Uh, which I think really has just got us thinking about NPM and dependencies generally in JavaScript land. So, yeah, it's a really interesting thing, right? Like, so I guess over the last few years, we've, our front-end dependencies have become dependent on NPM to such a great degree, right? Yeah. And, like, I kind of figure you're, you're the kind of guy who likes lots of little mini dependencies all over <laughs> the place, right? Yeah. How did you guess? <laughs> Just, I don't know, Just in your eyes yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, do you ever feel nervous about that? Or? Yeah, it's it's interesting because basically the whole the whole approach of loads of little dependencies works really well until it breaks, and then everyone starts thinking about if it does actually work well yeah. or not. Um, and I myself are guilty of finding a package online that does what I need, however small that piece of function might be, and just kind of chucking it into my my own app. Um, really, the the issue then becomes who do you trust to to author these these modules, and who can you depend on? If you pardon the dreadful pun. Um, that wasn't even on purpose. It just comes naturally. Uh, you know, and I think the question here is: should should projects that are large, like Babel, like React, like all the other ones that broke, um, be depending willy nilly on on modules without vetting them to some degree? This module, the left pad module, was eleven lines of JavaScript, has something like ten stars on GitHub. Um, I wouldn't describe it as a prolific module, but then, you know, you say people are saying, well, they should have influenced that themselves which is fine, but then where do you draw the line on implementing stuff yourself, you know? I mean, so, like, is there any way that you can check over every dependency that you have? I mean, I get this thing, like, as soon as I'm starting a site, and I'm like, oh, I want to take my SAS and make it in CSS, I'll put in Gulp, I'll put in, yeah. like, suddenly I've got, like, 150 different sub-dependencies. Exactly. And is, this, is a left pad module on its own something that we should be encouraging, that kind of size of of package um, it's it's a bit of functionality that would be pretty straightforward for you to implement yourself right? any developer would be able to I'd imagine um, so it's interesting and have, you know I think we're at the stage where front-end development we're not really used to. it's getting more complicated all the time like a few years ago we didn't have NPM really we didn't have client-side JavaScript applications our JavaScript was as much as a little jQuery carousel or accordion I pine for the good old days but we have all these dependencies, front-end development is way more complicated now, by necessity. You know, is the real issue here, nothing to do with dependencies at all, but more the fact that NPM lets you unpublish packages. So if I, the author, have published something like LeftPad, and then for whatever reason I decide to, to take it down, should I be allowed to do that? Just at any point. This Doesn't that break the entire... The whole point of NPM is that we can freely depend without concern and worry. Right, okay, so on one hand, it's a massive problem because that's going to have that effect that we had like yesterday or whatever on that. Yeah. But in another point, it's like you're actually using that dependency and yet you're trusting someone else to serve it to you or something like that. Yeah. Like you've not paid any money to NPM, right? No. So I, like, I, I think there's part of it is like a responsibility to yourself to how you kind of go about development to have that. Like, so stuff like having a kind of like... Um, like storing your dependencies locally or like kind of committing them in and having yeah. them so that you have access to them as independently, I think is a kind of solution. I, I don't, I don't, yeah. think, it, I don't think it falls entirely on NPM's back. No. Some companies got around this by having their own private NPM. So as developers in the free world, are we, are we relying too much on NPM? Like do we take far too much for granted? Should we be more grateful for our NPM overlords? Right. I actually kind of, I, 
dug the way that Bauer works, right? Like, you, you don't like Bauer, do you? You dug the way that Bauer works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Wait, you, well, okay convince me. You could use Bauer to kind of keep things in check, but ultimately you'd be changing stuff in your own code base. Yeah. Rather than, there's been a kind of switch with that kind of, to a more kind of traditional dependency system yeah. where you don't have that control anymore. Yeah, kind of where we don't check no modules in, whereas exactly. people did check Bauer components But more in. that Bauer, it's not, it's more that Bauer was fitted around that way of work. Okay, yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. we've kind of transitioned away from that yeah. at some point. So the file year. system isn't the source of truth Exactly, now. exactly. And I, I'd, I, I'd kind of like it if it was. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and that's fair. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. Nice yeah, yeah, so the, the point here is if, um, if we did check node modules in, then this wouldn't have been such a big deal. It would have been annoying because a fresh npm install wouldn't have worked. But you would have still had everything locally. You know, the biggest problem was deploys and CI servers and stuff were breaking because most of them rely on an npm install first. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I think it's also important to note out there was that th this was a big problem. It didn't take any websites down. Yeah. Like you know, so I think I'm less concerned about depending on things like this. I don't think that's a massive deal. I think if you'd say, okay, left pad as a function is is too small to depend on, we'll write it ourselves. You have to draw a line at some point, and this problem. It happened to be, in this case, the module was left pad, which was 11 lines long. But it could have been a module that was 200 lines long, or 500 lines, or did loads more, that you would never think, okay, I'm going to spend a day writing this myself. I think, you know, we're still learning how best to do this stuff on the client side. NPM will improve as a result of this. I expect that they'll get stricter um, on how and when you can unpublish. I think that has ultimately caused this issue. I think once your module is out in the wild after a particular time period, and is dependent on, arguably you shouldn't be able to get rid. I think unpublishing is there if you publish something with a security flaw or a massive problem and you can quickly get rid of it again. But a, a long term, I don't think it's a solution. I, don't, I think that breaks the whole ecosystem if we allow people to do that. Uh, and longer term with tools like Rollup, Webpack 2 and it's tree shaking and dead code elimination, all that, this won't, this won't be as big a problem. So that's what Ben and I think, and we'd love to hear your opinions. Links to the Twitter accounts are down below. Feel free to get in touch. Ha <laughs> <laughs>